Hey again, it's me. So today we're going to take a road trip. I'm going to show you something interesting about the uh, Tesla frame and the charging devices and stuff so you get a, a good idea of um, how you do charging on the vehicle. Yes, this is not a Tesla. This is my Lincoln Mark C. I still own a gas car. I'm like everybody else waiting for a Model 3, so this will have to do. It's a nice car though. Anyways, let's go for a ride. First order of business, I gotta get some coffee. Oh yeah, coffee. Welcome. So this is a Tesla high-powered wall connector. It's a box that you mount on the wall and you put in a 220 power. And this is the wand. So this is the connector that goes into the uh, left side of the Tesla's uh, tail light. This is what's used to charge a bit, but you can see here it's not very big at all. So you're not obligated to get this, but this is actually recommended if you want to keep the UMC, and I'll show you this later, the universal mobile connector that actually comes with the car. Keep that in the back of the vehicle so that when you're traveling, you have somewhere to plug into, uh, to 220 or whatever. So I, I plan on getting one of these and putting this on the side of the, the garage where I live. Now, the, the high-powered wall connector will accept a 40 amp circuit or an 80 amp circuit if you want uh, high-speed charging at home you have to get an 80 amp uh, however your car must be equipped with either a 72 amp single charger like in a Model X or a dual charger uh, dual charger option like the Model S uh, don't know what Model 3 will come with based on uh, what Model X's option is right now which is a single charger 72 amp my guess is that that's probably the way it'll go with uh, Model 3 if they make it a, as an option for home now, it just happens to be that this mobile connector is uh, located about a two minute drive from my house. And here is another charging station for electric vehicles. And this uses what's called the J1772 connector. And you can see how much bulkier it is. So, this is kind of your, you know, your usual connector. Now, you can use this on a Tesla as well. They give you a little uh, adapter, it's contained in the glove compartment. And you can put that on the end of this and plug it in the back of the Tesla. So our little road trip today takes us to the Tesla showroom in Yorkdale Mall in Toronto. So this will give us an opportunity to have a look around and show you a little bit about how the cars are built. And uh, we'll explain some stuff as we go. So speaking of charging, so on the right is your typical 110, 120 uh, volt outlet. This is what you find in homes. On the left is a NEMA 1450. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. So uh, NEMA 1450 is a 40 to 50 amp circuit, 220 volt. And uh, this is what you want to install in your garage if you don't have a high powered wall connector. The uh, UMC, which is the universal mobile connector that comes with the car, uh, plugs directly into one of these. And that'll give you a level two charge. So you can charge overnight. If you've never visited a Tesla store before, I'll give you a few pictures of uh, what they have on display. Every Tesla store has a Model S frame on display, minus the body, to give you an idea of how the vehicle is constructed. So in this shot, starting from the rear, you'll see the uh, drive uh, inverter uh, transmission and the motor, which is mounted between the rear axles of the vehicle. And moving forward, you'll see this is the pan of the vehicle where the battery is mounted underneath. Something important to note about Model S and Model X frames is that they are composed of several aluminum stampings. Uh, there are some uh, castings as well. Uh, they're welded together. Uh, there's a lot of different parts that make up this frame, which also makes the, comp uh, the vehicle rather complex to manufacture. So Tesla is going to simplify this uh, frame construction for Model 3 to make it cheaper and easier and faster to manufacture. Here's some more details of the drivetrain between the rear wheels. On this side, you see the drive inverter in the silver case. Moving over, we find the one-speed transmission, gear reduction drive. And over on this side is the three-phase induction AC motor. I didn't have a banana with me for scale, so I had to use my hand. So here's an idea of the size of the drivetrain between the rear wheels. Depending on the car, the rear motor can put out anywhere from 328 horsepower to 532 horsepower for the vehicles equipped with the ludicrous mode. Moving towards the front of the vehicle, you'll see in the front bumper area, there's a high-strength steel boron uh, bumper, and that's the black parts. 
On either side of the front bumper area, you'll find these openings in the front. These are for the heat exchangers. There's one for the battery pack and the other one for the interior cabin. One of the great benefits of a Tesla is not having a gasoline engine in the front, so that affords us lots of storage space um, in the front trunk area, or what we call the frunk. Also a very large crumple zone in the front of the vehicle in the event of a crash. It's a very safe car. Here I am uh, playing with the air suspension pump motor, and you can see it's very well isolated with rubber grommets. It, uh, it's pretty loose in there, so that way it doesn't uh, uh, transmit vibrations when it's operating into the frame of the vehicle. Here's another shot of the front minus the tub, and you can see the pumps and the power steering. And to the upper right is the uh, motor for the uh, front wheel drivetrain system. At the bottom of this image is the power steering pump and the rack and pinion, and to the upper left is the front drivetrain motor uh, drive shaft going out to the wheels. This is the front drive motor as seen from the driver's side when you're sitting in the vehicle. Obviously you can't see this because of a firewall, but you can see the arrangement. It's very compact, and you can see there's quite a few castings. Again, my hand for scale, so you get an idea of how big it really is. The front motor puts out 259 horsepower. It's pretty serious. So now that we know how a Model S is constructed, let's take another closer look at the Model 3. In this video here, I'm going to slow it right down, and you'll be able to get a good close look at the rear of the vehicle. And you'll see here that the drivetrain between the wheels is much more compact. Uh, it's been stated many times before that Tesla had to re-engineer the vehicle from the ground up to miniaturize everything in order to get this car much smaller. Looking towards the front of the Model 3 video again, we'll slow it right down so you get a very good close look at the front trunk area. And you'll see the drivetrain motor between the front wheels is much smaller than a Model S. The main thing that I take from most of these videos after looking at them several times is Model 3 is uh, a much simpler construction. There's uh, less stampings, there's less castings in the vehicle. It really does seem to be really well thought out. I hope this video has helped explain some of the charging options that are available and how you charge the vehicle as well as the general overall construction of a Model S and how it will pertain to a Model 3. So, uh, thanks for subscribing. If you have any comments, put them in the bottom, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.